Welcome to everybody to the fourth session. The title is uh, the management consulting as a factor of uh, growth. And um, in this session, we invited also the vice president of uh, the European Commission, Vittorio Antonio, sorry, Tajani. He, he was not sure to be present. Uh, and um, this morning uh, we received uh, a letter from him. Uh, and uh, I think uh, it was distributed. And uh, it is, uh, I see, in Italian. So I just remember that uh, the vice president uh, is uh, thinks that uh, it's a uh, correct the idea that the management consulting uh, is a factor of uh, growth and uh, especially it will help us to um, have uh, uh, the financing we are asking to have uh, for the Erasmus uh, program. We'll speak about uh, this afternoon in the General Assembly of ECO and uh, we hope to go on with this. We are very late, uh, late, 15 minutes late, so I just uh, ask to Gustavo, which, uh, who is our keynote uh, today, to start. Gustavo Piga is from uh, University of Tovergata. University of, of Tovergata is our partner in, in the annual survey in our observatory. And uh, is, um, we saw yesterday the results uh, in the morning, yesterday morning. So I give, give to Gustavo. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Uh, it's a great pleasure. I take advantage, I guess, of yesterday's presentation uh, to go beyond Italy, obviously. I, I guess we're here to talk at least about Europe, and I believe it's quite hard. Um, can we get rid of this thing that is in front? No, huh? it's in the screens here. Um, it would be one, uh, it's quite a challenge to talk these days about Europe. Um, for many reasons. One, one reason I would argue uh, Europe is made of so much diversity, especially now, that to say Europe is. But most of all, because I think that we have lost the sense of what is the European project. Uh, just to show you how much we've changed in just uh, half a century, look at this. Um, look at the beauty of this statement. Look at the words. Liberté, diversité. This guy, you know his name, Jean Monnet. Um, revolution. When do you, when do you ever re hear revolution from Brussels? And, but look at the pragmatism of putting these beautiful values within a project and an economic project, an institutional project of the Communauté Européenne du Charbon et de l'Acier, and the pragmatism of our founding, founding fathers. Uh, Fifty years later, the diversity we speak about is a completely different kind of uh, diversity. It's not that value that we cherished at the beginning of our construction. And uh, the main reason is probably due to this guy, the nasty thing called recession. Uh, what, what you see here are some data starting from, and it's good that I have this data because they can be similar to the ones that were showed yesterday, between 2008 and 2012, uh, per capita, correct for inflation and whatever. This does not relate to the Euro area, it relates to the European Union as a whole. And correctly so, the guys that did this graph uh, show GDP performance in black. It's good that they show it in black because it's par particularly disastrous, right? Um, the other things that, are, the other colors I will talk about just later on. Let me just say that if you look at the Italian data, well, I, I mean, if you go from Europe and you start looking at the countries that make Europe, I was glad to see, actually I was sad to see that the Italian data in a sense confirmed this incapacity to go back to where we were before. Actually, Italy, it's the strongest case. If you look at the data, we are not yet back in terms of per, real per capita income to where we were in 2001. Okay, but having said this, this is a crisis with which we're struggling, uh, even in the management consulting. These are, these are not data for uh, GDP. This is management consulting. However, once you take the FAIRCO annual survey, you see that if you take the European look, there is something very different. Europe does not look, Europe uh, management consulting does not look like Italy. But especially Europe management consulting does not look like Europe GDP. 
there is some uh, rosier, pinkier picture. As you can see, the data for 2011 and 2012 are better than the one of 2008. So there is uh, some resiliency here, which we want to talk about uh, later, later on in the presentation. But, but the thing that there is in common uh, with GDP figures is this thing that I was telling you. <clears throat> Don't look at the graph. Look at what's on top of the graph, which relates to GDP as a nation. We have this incredible, did you, do you remember that black figure? The, the black uh, widowy figure of the minus uh, God knows how much percent for Europe? Well, that is composed of many different performances across countries. You have Germany that is already much better than it was in 2007. And then you have Greece, which is at minus 14%. Um, um, so some, some countries might just tell you which crisis. There, there is no crisis if they reason in, nation, in national terms. The, uh, once again, the picture that we get by looking at the performances of countries uh, uh, on the management consulting side tell us the same thing. There is diversity in performance, but the diversity is smoother. Uh, it's, look at Greece, for example. Greece in management consulting is not minus 14%. It's minus... Uh, 0 0.6. Now, granted, this is one year, but the numbers are much smaller, which again tell you something about the resilience of this sector even during this, uh, this, this crisis. Now, let me go back to the graph I showed you. Um, let's talk about where does the black come from. And the ba black com comes from, obviously, the red, which is investment, and the green, which is consumption. Just like in the 1930s, this is a demand crisis. Internal demand has vanished, has disappeared. What is the good news? Well, the good news is the purple, is the purple uh, item, which tells us that exports are, in a sense, smoothing out the crisis. They're sort of saving Europe. Now, mind you, these exports that you look are the exports of the European Union outside of its boundaries. I don't know if you've noticed, every time there is good news from Japan or the US, the Italian stock market goes up. That's the only, the only days when the Italian stock market goes up, it's when something good happens in Japan or in the US, because we basically become reliant on what happens, not out of Italy, out of the European borders. Because if you look at exports of Italy, of France, of Germany, to Italy, Germany, and France, those exports collapse. Why? Because there is no internal demand. So the French don't demand, and they don't demand to the Italians that don't demand to the French. Um, but so, still again, international performance outside of the boundary saves us. The other thing I would like to show you, which is completely different from the 1930s, is the blue one. It's true that government has been there a little bit, but much, much less than it was in the 1930s. The internal demand deficit has not been bridged by the presence of public demand, public procurement. Uh, these are aggregate numbers. Uh, once you go at the report of yesterday that I saw on Italy, I was happy to see that this basically the same thing are occurring. Who is suffering the most in the management consulting business? Well, it's what are, they are called purely domestic firms. It's firms that are basically reliant on domestic demand. And who is smoothing out the crisis? Look at the, the blue, the, the dark purple uh, data. It's the firms that have an international market. So in a sense, we find the same result. Now, look at, however, while internationalization is good for everyone, look at uh, uh, the domestic-oriented. The domestic-oriented, the light blue that really suffer in this crisis, it's the small and medium firms. In the management consulting, in the management consulting business, no, everywhere. This is a very interesting survey that the ECB does every six months. And uh, um, they basically ask SMEs and large firms, what is your basic most important problem that you have experienced in the past uh, six months? And it's not access to finance for SMEs. It's not access to finance. It's not competition. It's not the cost of production. Regularly for the past three years, the big problem that has been experienced by small firms, even more than large firms, is finding customers, which is called basically demand. Now, why do I choose to show the, 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 the graph of the SMEs and not in general? Well, uh, if we look at the data, this is again, we're back, uh, we're back to Italy. And Italy has been one of these countries in Europe where 
global performance and global de internal demand has gone down, well, what you see is that who is dying right now, indeed, is by dimension, is the micro and the small firms. So this is a crisis that, as we know, this is perfect storm is not hitting the large ship that can weather it out. It's the small dingy boat that is thrown away. Now, uh, you might say, well, this is Italy. You're right. Because if you look at Europe at large, you don't see exactly the same picture. Once again, look at the, 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 the in this case, I think the small firms are the gray ones. Well, look at 2010, 2011. Small firms across Europe are not doing that badly. So small firms do really disastrously there where the economy is doing disastrously. Not necessarily in economies that are uh, kind of able to survive. Now, why is that important? Why is that important? Well, it may not be important for Germany right now. It might, might be extremely important uh, for Italy and the other countries that are suffering. Don't forget. When you have a recession of this kind, it happens once every 100 years, and you don't fix it immediately, you're going to have a permanent scar. There's going to be two dingy boats that are going to collapse forever. One is the youngsters. Once a young guy comes out of school, of universities, and he doesn't find a job, and he looks for it for one year, that's it. He's done. He's over. Either he goes to work for the mafia, or he kills himself, or he enters into a depression. We're not here to talk about this very relevant issue. We're talking about the other youngsters, which is the SMEs. Well, the SMEs, this wonderful little idea that might one day become a large, huge, competitive firm, well, a recession like this doesn't care about the idea. The SME is killed, and it's killed forever. And this graph worries me a lot that was shown yesterday. The growing concentration, the growing share that the large firms are gathering in the market is not good news to me. It is not good news to me. It means that the small guys are vanishing and the big boats are remaining. And if the small guys bring ideas, that's not a good idea. That's not a good news for society. However, having said this, I found this slide so interesting. You showed it yesterday because you might think that we are here talking about management consulting and the only thing we have to worry about is this temporary crisis. And yesterday you said, no, let's ask ourselves if there is more to our problems than only a temporary crisis, and if, the, if there is something in the economy that is, that is occurring which is much more long-term and much more critical that we should discuss. And actually, this reminded me of one day I was with Ned Phelps. He's a Nobel Prize in economics. He came to Rome a couple of years ago, uh, and he said, look, guys, it's good that you talk about the recession. But be careful. The recession is smoke in our eyes. And when he said our, he was talking about the US and Europe, the Western world. Why did he say that? Well, Phelps said basically, look, this, this guy is Phelps. Uh, he, look at the, OK, look at this graph here. In, in, uh, in black, you see it's the, from the, the decade of the 50s, the decade of the 60s, the decade of the 70s, 80s, and 90s. The black, dark uh, histogram Rectangle is the word growth. The other two on the, on the right side for each decade is USA and Western Europe. What you see in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, mid 70s, is something we know very well. The US and Europe were the locomotive, you say locomotive, the training engine of the word growth. Look what happens in the 80s and 90s. We disappear. We have stopped being the driving engine of growth in the world. And we know very well, if you look at the data of Asia, you see that this is the case. So right, this is quite an issue. Why have we declined? We don't like working anymore? Maybe that's our consideration. It's possible. Or maybe we have created some uh, wrong uh, institutional infrastructure. God knows, God knows what. We should talk about these things. But, 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 interestingly enough, if you want to find hope, well, this decline, this long-term decline, these are European data, once again, are not in management consulting. There's something about management consulting that makes it more and more relevant as, uh, as days and years and decades go by, obviously, once again, with huge differences across countries. 
right? So th there is news, good news, but there is also dispersion. Look at the, the importance of, you saw it yesterday, of management consulting for Italy compared, compared to Germany. These are huge numbers, especially if the phenomenon is a dynamic one. But I was reminded more than this about the time when I was asked to be a consultant for the World Bank, uh, the Italian government paid me to go to the World Bank and inquire why Italian firms were not winning anymore in the recent decade uh, the procurement tenders of emerging economies that were financed by the World Bank. So basically what was happening is that Ghana, Tunisia, Azerbaijan were receiving money from the World Bank. With this money they were doing public procurement. Firms from everywhere in the world were participating and Italian firms were not winning anymore. And obviously they said, go check the data and tell us why this is happening. Interestingly enough, uh, obvious answers came out. The Indians and the Chinese have learned how to do bridges. Thank you so much, so the Italians will not win anymore. But in, that, in those data that I found, there was something very interesting. This was true that the Indians and the Chinese had learned to do bridges even for France, Germany, UK, the US. But Germany, France, the UK, and the US were not decreasing in terms of shares as much as Italy. And you know why? Uh, look at the le uh, your, yeah, your left side, con consultancies. The, the last two rectangles are China in orange and India in striped uh, black and white. Uh, so you see that the Chinese and the Indians have learned how to do opere civili, which is basically infrastructure, goods, beni. But look at consultancies. Consultancies was the only sector in which the Western world had still resilience and was not losing shares. It's a market that, has been, that is still untouched. Obviously, Italy was doing badly because Italy was not winning even in consultancies, while the French, the UK. So it's a sector that can allow us to weather also the long-term storm. I'm headed to, uh, to the end of it because this is the key issue, right? We we're here to talk about weathering the storm, and this was this wonderful thing that came out yesterday, once again for Italy, but which I think uh, teaches us a lesson. Uh, two huge problems. Two huge problems. What is your problem? Well, SMEs do not relate with consultants. The consultants do not find a market in this. I mean, the US, 99%, yesterday we had the administrator of the Small Business Administration here in Rome. He said 99% of firms are small for, US, for the US. Obviously, he was using a different, uh, yeah, different slide. <laughs> but still, they call small whatever is smaller than 500, OK? But still, um, we know it's 97, 96, whatever. And the second thing is, again, related a little bit to internal demand, but it's more than that. We don't have one key client in Italy. This key client is called the public sector. Now, what did this remind me of? Well, it reminded me, first of all, let's talk about the SMEs. It reminded me that Europe is missing one critical tool to weather the storm, which the US has, which Brazil, China, India, Mexico, you name it, are building, which is an industrial policy targeted for the SMEs. In 1953, Dwight Eisenhower, created the Small Business Act. In 2011, six, almost 60 years later, the, Itali the Europeans did the Small Business Act. Don't ever dare to compare the two. The Small Business Act of the Americans has a ministry entirely dedicated. It's called the Small Business Administration, independent from government, directly reporting to the president, directly related to do what? To do this wonderful thing. Look at this, the beauty. Just read it. It's the initial part of the law of 1953. Look at the beauty. You will never find these words in Europe. It basically says the essence of the American economic system of private enterprise is free competition. It looks like we're in Europe, right? Even in Europe, you could find a sentence of this kind. But then look what happens after. The preservation and expansion of such competition. So a necessary condition for that, for um, the well-being and the security of the nation is small business what? Is to aid, counsel, assist, and protect. Protect. Look at the beauty of the word protect, which we Europeans would say, oh, no, this is protectionism, right? Have you ever seen a mother protecting a kid when he has to cross the street when he's five years old? You think that's a bad thing? 
It's a bad thing if the mother keeps on taking his hand when he's 15 years old, right? But it's a fantastic thing when he's five years old. We don't have this in Europe. Uh, some examples of the wonderful things you could do. I mean, this relates to consultants. Just, uh, there's plenty of stories that we have where government can do in industrial policies with SMEs, putting management consulting at the heart of it. Sometimes with very basic consulting is what the SMEs need. But this, as we have plenty of stories when wonder, where wonderful things occur when you do this fantastic triangle between management consulting, governments, and SMEs together, which I think Europe does not do enough at all. Last thing I want to tell you is obviously the, that client that doesn't exist, the public administration. Uh, basically, in Italy, it's impossible to do, uh, it's been, it's impossible to do consultancy in the public sector because we think that uh, a consultancy contract for the public sector is tantamounts to corruption. So I, I took this graph, which basically is a fantastic graph because it tells you about why Europe is in such a state of disarray long term. It, tell, it divides in blue Germany, in red Italy, okay, it's the north and the south, and it tells you a, a whole bunch of indicators of the quality of public sector in before we enter the euro and after we enter the euro. Look at control of, corru of corruption, for example. What we see is that Germany was perceived as much less corrupt than Italy in the late 90s. Well, that's a fantastic indicator that something has to be done, right? To change the public sector of the country that is perceived as more corrupt, otherwise its competitiveness is going to disappear. Well, look what happened 10 years later. Have we worked on this? Have we worked on this? Look at the graph. The difference between Germany and Italy widens and does not decrease. In the process, the public sector has not worked one bit with the consulting industry. Why? Because it said that if we work with it, we're more corrupt. And look at what happened to corruption. God knows, and I'm talking as an Italian, when they tell us we need less government, and I look at the performance of the private sector in Germany, in the UK, in France, in China, in the US, that is so dynamic. God knows if that private sector performance does not depend on having near you as a private sector a fantastic public sector that allows every day to think in its actions about the consequences for the private sector of whatever it rules and whatever it says. And God knows if public this public sector can be helped by the consulting industry in a virtuous circle that creates and generates more jobs, a more competitive economy that can be more resilient to the global competition. So basically, I conclude here. Let's fix it together. Let's first, for let's first this is the prerequisite. Let's go back to dream. Let's use the same words. Let's stop using those 3%, 60% words that are not dreams. And once we're dreaming, let's start to reorganize the public sector. And then at that point, we can challenge the rest of the world like we, like we used to do and restore the European dream. Thank you so much.